Hi, my name is Jun and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Agraba Ventures. So Agraba Ventures uh, basically um, just started um, last year. So the problem we aim to solve is um, the, the inefficiencies in the Philippine agriculture value chain. Um, farmers and fisher folks lack stable market channel, easy access to financing, and reliable logistics. Um, usually there is seven layers before a produce of a farmer reach the retail market. Um, for example, in, in Benguet, um, someone would pick up the, the produce in, in the farms, bring it to the trading post, and from the trading post, they would have to bring it to the wholesale market, which is um, usually in Balintawak and Divisoria. And after that, that's the only time it would reach uh, the retail market across uh, Metro Manila. So there's a lot of layer. In each layer, there is food waste. and each layer, there's an increase in, in uh, pricing. So you would notice um, on the news, uh, Repolio or, or uh, Sayote would, would cost around 5 to 15 pesos in, in, in Benguet. However, when it reaches Metro Manila, it suddenly doubled. It's just because the value chain is very inefficient. So we created uh, Agraba Ventures. Basically, we are just a managed service provider that offers improved efficiencies in the agriculture, commodities trading, trade financing, and logistics. So we have three main products. First one is Wharf. It is basically a purchasing platform wherein clients can order directly to farmers. And since we're trying to make the value chain more efficient, they can book the logistics within the platform. And if the farmer needs to increase their production due to the demand of the client, they can get loans um, using our loan matching platform with uh, different banks. Now, the advantage of this uh, finance is the rates here are lower compared to their current um, um, loan provider. Usually, the loan sharks um, offer them up to 10% or even 12% um, percent per, per every time they, they loan. But with, with this um, loan matching platform that we have, they could get as low as 1% um, interest rate. It's because the banks are comfortable uh, giving loans to our farmers since we are the one facilitating the trade. So it, it, we, we are basically risking the financial uh, institutions who are within our loan matching platform. So our business model is very straightforward. Uh, customers would order um, to uh, grab us platform. They send the order, then process payment, and then we forward that to our farmers and the farmer does the fulfillment using uh, our, our uh, services like the logistics. Um, our, our market is pretty big. Um, it's 8.3 billion, the total addressable market. And then the serviceable addressable market is 1.7 billion. Uh, now we're, we're trying to aim the serviceable obtainable market of 871 million. Uh, this is um, annual. Um, here's our competency map, our competition map. So we position ourselves to be the leader in high volume agri uh, produce fulfillment on uh, a B2B model. So most of uh, other players are in uh, the B2C and low volume um, fulfillment for um, B2C market. But for us, we, we focus on the high volume. Our minimum viable product um, so far, um, since last year, 2019 to present, are, are, are with this three main uh, category. First, we have the seaweed. Um, it's over 205 metric tons. Um, and uh, the transaction value for this is uh, around at least 1.5 to 2 million every delivery. So that, that's every month. That's a transaction value, um, roughly around 2 million pesos transaction value. And for the cut flowers, this is one of our fast uh, growing commodity. We have supplied over 500,000 units of uh, cut flowers. And we're also billing uh, at the same rate as the seaweeds of around uh, 1.5 to 2 million uh, monthly uh, for the transaction value for this one. And then we have fruits and vegetable. Um, if you'll notice, this started only last March um, and up to now, uh, but we've only supplied 60 metric tons. Um, 
we're still trying to perf um this side of our our um supply chain because um we 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 come up with, with this one when the pandemic happens or the lockdown start um farmers cannot move their their produce so we tried to help them and and the result is we managed to move uh, 60 metric tons and this one is um still still growing we're trying to perfect um this one and we, we're hoping that within um the next few months this will uh double so that's our um minimum buy off now so our go to market is is very uh straightforward we increase in quantity while increasing the variety so here's our team so we have our chief financial officer um paulo you have over 14 years experience in, in in finance we have ivan our creative officer with over 10 years experience and um our, our chief technical officer orvin you have over 12 years experience in, in developing um platforms um me and my co-founder jojo we have over 10 years experience in our, our field uh, I have over 10 years experience in the agriculture value chain supplying seafood to big um, big clients, um, usually in the export market. Here's our mentor. And currently, um, we, we are supported by uh, Dado Banato Incubator, along with uh, the partner uh, Microsoft, PNA, Trade Lawyers, Works of Art, um, of course, in the government sector, uh, USD, uh, BFAR, and DA. So, we always believe that the grass is always greener where you water. Thank you. Good day, everyone. My name is Henry James Tison. I'm Chief Farming Officer at AgroDigital PH. We are in the business of raising farmers' incomes through virtual aggregation. We're more than a marketplace. We do not put a margin on top of goods sold on our platform. We also focus on business-to-business -business transactions, unlike most of our contemporaries who content themselves with final mile delivery. We are a platform as a service for cooperatives and associations. At the end of the day, we want to form a network of organized farmers to strengthen the marginalized and streamline the food value chain. I am a technologist by profession, but farming is a second career and clearly my passion. In the 10 years I have been in agriculture, the plight of farmers are all through re too real with my experiences validated by hundreds upon hundreds of farmers. Their stories are my stories. I have been a victim of fluctuating prices, and I have had a lot of difficult conversations with middlemen and intermediaries. Needless to say, I also have had a tough time making ends meet. Organizing farmers is our ticket to a fair and sustainable food value chain that leverages economies of scale. Not only do we optimize and cut handoffs from farm to table, we enable farmers so they can aggregate demand and consequently plan and synchronize production activities. More importantly, we seek an inclusive value chain where producers, consumers, and even intermediaries or middlemen have their place in the sun. This is what we do for more than 9 million Filipino farmers who still live below the poverty line. We designed the first incarnation of our platform to be the quickest way for farmers to monetize or produce. As soon as farmers are organized into clusters, we basically link them up to the market. And then um, as soon as confirmed orders go through our production management module, um, they are basically synchronized for production amongst farmers. As soon as harvest time comes, they are aggregated and delivered direct to clients. Payments on the other hand can be done electronically as partners we onboard are encouraged to have a digital wallet for ease of settlement. Throughout this entire exercise, AgroDigital PH provides a transparency and shepherding, if you will, for this digital value chain. Just a quick peek at our obtainable market. We're conservatively looking at around 1,500 agri cooperatives who are digitally ready out of some 11,000 agri cooperatives in the Philippines. Please take note that these numbers still, still do not include the thousands of farmer associations in the country. Another fun fact here is the Philippines agri market is structurally similar to that of its ASEAN neighbors and thus provides further upside for our platform. AgroDigital consists of seven main modules, two of which Agro marketplace as well as agro production are needed to connect producers and consumers. Agro registry is our governance module normally used by NGOs, foundations, and LGUs for direction and policy. These modules have been up since 2019. 
Now, our play for logistics, on the other hand, should be ready by the start of quarter two next year. Now, beyond the technology, most of our efforts revolve around educating farmers and how this digitally enabled value chain can lift them out of poverty. Our solution has been validated multiple times through production aggregation activities and proof of income pilots. Perhaps our most telling story is how we fared during COVID quarantine. That is, from mid-March through end June, we logged around 420 tons of goods to the tune of 16.2 million pesos on our platform. Initially, we expected to focus energies on converting farmer cooperatives and associations. Pleasantly, I might say, um, more than a handful of people believe in what we are doing and provided the support to get our feet firmly planted on the ground. We have to thank our institutional buyers who provide the demand and the rest of our partners in the ecosystem who are our agents of change and do their part to encourage farmers to do this new way of doing business. Our revenue model revolves around monthly subscriptions as well as licensing agreements to compensate our partners who act on our behalf. The latter provides better reach and more hands to push for the platform. We firmly believe if you want the change to stick, it has to be quick, it has to be at scale. We are two founders at AgroDigital PH, have 25 years of experience in IT and 10 in agriculture. Ken, on the other hand, has more than a decade of experience in IT and is the technical brains behind our platform. In summary, we continue to drive demand as this spurs our farming clusters to continue production. As we scale our operations, we need the participation of more farmer groups. Our locus is primarily in Calabarzon, but we would like to see more interest in the Ilocos and Central Luzon regions, if only for supply resiliency. As soon as travel restrictions ease, we want to see our platform tested also in either the Visayas or the Mindanao. More importantly, please partner with us and invest in this new ecosystem. It should be easy to find where our paths intersect. Again, we are AgroDigital PH, and we are in the business of harnessing digital to improve the lives of the new Filipino farmer. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Ruel from Capital, and we are the Philippines' largest crowd lending platform for small farmers. In the Philippines, there are 11 million small farmers, and the average income is at $2 per day. Most of the smallholder farmers are also credit dependent. They need capital in order to buy seeds, fertilizer, and do land preparation. However, despite credit dependency, most of them still get their loans from informal lenders, some of which charge as high as 20% interest rate per month. And this is where Capital can help. We are a crowd lending platform that enables anyone to finance and lend directly to small farmers. Aside from loans, Capital also help farmers increase their income. By leveraging on the loans that anyone could provide to them, we also help them access high quality inputs, agricultural trainings, technologies, insurance, and even technicians. To date, we have reached more than 1,300 small farmers across the Philippines, helping them save up to 300,000 US dollars worth of interest savings. One of our farmers, Tatay Federico, also shared with us that prior to Capital, he can only access loans at 10% interest rate. When he joined Capital, he was able to buy seeds and fertilizer and through the assistance as well he shared that he was able to successfully double his income during that particular cycle so how it works anyone with access to the internet could lend directly to a small farmer and in return they get rewarded by 3.5 percent interest net profit so on the side of the farmers those who are able to access loans are also able to access high quality seeds, inputs, receive insurance, and technical assistance through our various expert partners. We also actually help our farmers in marketing. Currently, we connect them to different buyers and cooperative millers. But we recently have extended our service by establishing and launching the Capital Store. This is, in a way, helping our co-op buyer 
to buy at a premium price to our Cropital supported communities. This is also a community powered store, whereas the farmers as producers, well, the lenders that we have could act as buyer and also resellers getting some rewards doing so as well. Cropital primarily earns from its lending or peer to peer lending platform. Cropital charge around 5% on the side of the lenders and 3.5% on the side of the farmers, totaling to about 8.5% in revenue for every loan. Cropital also used the service fees to pay for the insurances and processing. Currently, Cropital is focused on rice farmers. In the 11 million farmers in the Philippines, 2 million are rice farmers, of which about 120 billion peso or 2.4 billion US dollar is actually extended as capital every year for rice production. We have also grown more than 20 times already from the year we launched in 2016 and have reached 10 provinces across the Philippines. We also have a growing lender base of more than 54,000 right now. And for those who have lent, the average cumulative lending amount is reaching more than $500 and a retention rate of 74% for our lenders. The team behind Cropital are young individuals whose expertise and background are in agriculture, financing, fundraising, and banking technologies. We are also supported and backed by our advisors whose expertise and experience are in managing agribusinesses and managing NGOs with special focus to farmer resiliency. We are also have been supported by two governments, the Philippine government through the DOST and the Dubai government through the Expo Life Grant. Again, thank you very much and we are Cropital. We hope you can join us in this journey. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ralph, and I'm the CEO and founder of Urban Greens. Who are we? What do we do? So we are a urban farming company, and we evolved the Philippine food scene by introducing cleaner, fresher, and smarter grown food made possible by hydroponic urban farming. Our main target market is anyone who seeks fresh produce, and uh, we target those customers by delivering um, fresh healthy greens and vegetables um, straight to the consumer, be that to B2B, B2C, through restaurants, uh, bars, and hotels. But we also provide services such as educational workshops and uh, through our educational starter kits, hydroponic starter kits. The main um, sort of overarching uh, topics here are hydroponics, indoor farming, and particularly urban farming. Why do we need urban farming, particularly here in the Philippines? Well, in the last four weeks, we've had uh, four very devastating typhoons that have had a severe impact on our farming communities here, disrupting um, the supply chain of a lot of the foods that the restaurants and the, the, uh, the supermarkets and the individuals have been getting, such as yourself. And um, this is not uncommon for the Philippines and the next typhoon is just around the corner with an increased frequency over the next couple of years. So this is nothing we can change. The concept that we pursue is indoor urban farming, which shelters us from all of these uh, outside effects, um, such as storms, typhoons, or in January, we had a Taal volcano eruption, as you might remember. And our concept is to use unused underutilized commercial spaces and we turn them into profitable eco-friendly sources of fresh food creating extra revenue for those spaces um, here example here are two examples one in makati and one in bgc where we've used uh, where we've turned um, unused spaces into such urban farms growing quite a number of food and the produce at the end of the day is fresh 
nutritious, and particularly pesticide-free. It's locally grown and delivered right to your doorstep. So what we do is we grow right in the heart of the city, reducing the carbon footprint in terms of logistics and transport, and allowing your food to be a lot fresher. And again, it's all pesticide-free. Our vision is to ensure food access and food security and particularly food sovereignty for the Philippines and all its citizens. Our strategy now is to take all of the key learnings from those small spaces and consolidate them into a larger uh, project. So we're looking currently to raise funds for a larger, more consolidated, let's say, warehouse project right here in the heart of the metro. And if you want to be part of it, hit us up. We do this by using um, technology. So um, the Philippine farm scene is uh, quite dated. If you go through the countryside and you look at the different farms, we still we are still relegated to uh, to technologies used in, in in the last century. So what we do is we update um, farming and we bring it to um, the, the current century, and we use. Uh, uh, technologies such as IoT, blockchain, data analytics. We use remote monitoring so we can have a really good feel on what our plants are doing at any given time. Why do we need this? The Philippines is a growing population. More and more people move into the cities. All of these people have been need to be fed, but at the same time, we're losing a lot of valuable farmland and a lot of farmers are giving up their jobs because farming is simply not lucrative anymore. This also means that we are importing a lot of food, creating high dependency on foreign countries, losing our food sovereignty here in the Philippines. And on top of that, you know it, a lot, a lot of Filipinos are currently undernourished and even uh, starving. Hydroponics actually helps because we, again, we reduce the farm to table distance. We can actually grow year round. We're not affected, as I said before, by storms and typhoons. We have a lot more consistent yields and we use a lot fewer resources. What we do, Urban Greens is end-to-end uh, -end, uh, a truly Filipino company. So our science and our technology and our systems are built and designed and made here in the Philippines, catering for the Filipinos by the Filipinos. And what we offer in general is uh, homegrown kits, as well as I said before, and workshops. We're making a difference one leaf at a time. So join me in my quest in making the Philippines a lot more food safe. My name is Ralph and I'm the CEO and founder of Urban Greens. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Keb. I am from Tagani.ph and we keep digital agribusiness inclusive. We are a marketplace for inclusive agribusiness and fair trade goods. And throughout the pandemic, we have seen a lot of e-commerce farm-to-table platforms sprouting out. And it's basically because of the agribusiness supply chains is broken, corrupted, and middleman-centric. We also know that most of these platforms who, do, who does agribusiness inclusive are slow in delivery. They have the certain day from which they deliver. And then they also rely, the farmers rely on the middleman for valuation of their harvests and crops. And as a solution, um, actually, I pose a question. Is buying from farmers making your platform already inclusive? That's why Tagani is so different. We cut the layers of middleman by enabling the partner farmers to transport the goods themselves to the customers. We also outsource inventory hubs so that the uh, we spread the risk of spoilage and delivery time so that we also have the crops available all throughout the week. And also to maintain a fair market value, we enable a farm level record keeping for our farmers. So Tagani is a farmer to market to consumer platform that enables farmers to transport the logistics and become our fulfillment partners. So it starts from the farmer and then we have our Tagani retailers as our inventory hub and through the Tagani platform, the buyers can book for their goods. We also have our farm management app that allows us to forecast and have an analytics of our supply and market value and also our inventory through a QR-based IoT farm record keeping. And we also recommend tasks and activities curated by agriculturists and via SMS and app. Our market size is very, uh, it's just your normal e-commerce. 
Um, our target is the Montai Par last region, which has 660 families. And our business model is very simple as well. The average cart size for uh, is 500 pesos, and we have a flat rate of 15 pesos per transaction. Although our competition, we, we our positioning is that we are an inclusive agribusiness, and our delivery time is on demand. And it's through our three major competitive stra growth strategies. First is through our third-party inventory hubs that allows us to put the products on their own to commissions and through our Tagani retailer franchisees so that we could spread out our inventories as well. And also making farmers as the logistics partner so that they could improve their revenues and cutting really the middleman. This growth strategy allows us to spread the agribusiness risks through a franchise or oriented supply chain network. Our traction so far year to date since January, we were able to earn despite the pandemic 1.7 million pesos and have partner farmers of 110 because we don't want to spread ourselves too thinly. Our conversion rate is 4.04%. And we're also a pu public partner of the Kadiwa Outlet Marketing of the Department of Agriculture. Help us help you help farmers. Let's grow together and have a bountiful life with Tagani. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I hope all of you are coping well with the pandemic. I am Dr. Harry Hamoy. I am the Vice President and Chief Operations Officer for Pivotal Peak Digital Health Solutions, a pioneer startup from the University of the Philippines, Manila. You may ask, why should I be involved in digital health solutions? In the Philippines, it has been uh, overdue, long overdue, that we are, as a country fully take advantage of digital health solutions to enable a more responsive and equitable health system where information is also used in planning, managing, and monitoring health services, may it be in the public or private sector. The Universal Health Care Act that was signed into law last 2019 will be part of the foundation that will enable and promote the use of digital health solutions, particularly health information systems, like an electronic medical record system. So why should we, you be involved, whether you are a service provider, an investor or a local government official, this is the way forward in health service delivery in the Philippines. This will help enhance the current information system where available technologies will be used and maximized to make the provision of health services more efficient, more cost-effective, and more responsive to the needs of the patient or the community. A solution to this is the Community Health Information Tracking System, or CHITS. It's an electronic medical record system or an EMR that was developed in the National Telehealth Center, National Institutes of Health in the University of the Philippines, Manila. This is a product of years of research on health informatics and patient care. But why use CHITS and not any other EMR platforms? It was developed to be very, very user friendly, complies with DOH standards and can generate reports. It is interoperable using the HL7 FHIR International Health System Standards and ICD Disease Classification System. It already has a user footprint in over 300 health facilities in the country. It can be customized to develop health data dashboards, and it is also one of the first to be accredited by PhilHealth. It was not only built with a consultation clinic workflow in mind, but also for different health programs, like for maternal care or birth clinics and immunization clinics. It was built as a platform that can accommodate different modules. It is so versatile that we can customize what our clients want based on their needs. And if you want a special module for your facility, we can make that for you. So what is the market for CHITS? The use of an interoperable and electronic health record system is mandated by the Universal Healthcare Act and PhilHealth. The market includes the approximately 25,000 health facilities in the Philippines, both public and private. The almost 50,000 physicians and an estimated 110 million Filipinos as of November this year who will access the health services system. 
And now, this is our business model. We cater to government and private health facilities like primary care clinics, lying-in clinics, even specialty clinics like animal bite or dialysis centers, and also to individual private physicians who will need an electronic record system for their practice. And we have multiple revenue streams from very reasonable and competitive upfront fees and subscription fees. Another would be when developing modules or actual system-wide, city-wide, or a province-wide electronic health record system. And this is a sample of how this cheat system will work. So you see here, we can integrate cheats you know, with telemedicine, a physician screening, a platform and remote continuing medical education. We can do all of that because uh, coming from UP as an academic institution, this is something that we really do best. CHITS was developed in UP Manila, but now is with Pivotal Peak Digital Health Solutions. Pivotal Peak is composed of a team of experts, mostly from UP Manila, who are health informatics specialists, IT developers, public health specialist, communication specialist, and even a Balik Scientist ORD from Houston Health Services in Texas, USA. With the advent of the Universal Healthcare Act of 2019, Pivotal Peak is well positioned to take the lead in digital health solutions with its unique position as part of UP Manila, which is known for its excellence in health sciences and who have long engaged the Department of Health and the Department of Science and Technology. If you want to be part of this endeavor or want to know more about us and what we can offer, visit our website or send us an email. Our website is pivotalpeak.ph and our email is info at pivotalpeak.ph. Thank you and stay safe, everyone. Hello, everyone. My name is Paolo Bugayong, a co-founder and CEO at Aid. So allow me to share you my journey throughout this uh, four years in the startup industry. So the major problem today is that there's not enough hospital beds and also not enough doctors uh, in the country. In fact, it's very painful to get medical care. And it's also challenging to get care uh, for, for patients from the doctor's end. So we created AID. AID is the most trusted one-stop home health care and telemedicine platform in the country. It is a marketplace. Uh, we provide uh, medical care to the patients uh, in Metro Manila or in the country. And we also provide work to these medical professionals uh, all around the Philippines. Today, we have different services. Uh, we do COVID testing at home, lab testing, nursing care, medicine delivery, doctor home visit, physical therapy, and vaccinations, all at the doorstep at the comfort of your home. We've been doing about 11,000 requests uh, each month. Uh, we have 300,000 patient profiles in the app and 4,000 partners, medical professionals on board uh, that are utilizing the aid platform. You may download it in uh, Google Play or Apple Store. Aid has become more relevant today. Uh, in fact, uh, we've, we experienced another inflection point during the pandemic. People don't want to go to the hospitals or clinic and they want to get medical care through their phones or even have the doctor just come over their place. I began this in 2016 with my siblings. My brother, Patrick, is a doctor by education. Pam is a operations uh, by experience in Citibank, and myself as a finance guy uh, throughout my corporate life. So thank you so much, and some video to share with you some testimonials from our users. Thank you. I'm Angeline Mary Miraflor, mom of three and an HR professional. So I got curious, I downloaded the app. We've done the doctor consultation, and we've done the laboratory. That's been a year already. My kids are more comfortable having them at home. It's a game changer. It's not just convenience, affordability, but also the kind of people who work in 
it, it will be part of our lives as long as it's there. Hi, I'm Lila Marquez and I am from Interleukin. According to the WHO, four of the ten leading causes of inefficiencies in the health sector are procurement related. Almost 30% of health budgets are spent often poorly done, often involving lots of paperwork and ineffective planning. Product availability impacts the productivity of health workers when medicines and other essential supplies fail to arrive at the health facility. Patients and even healthcare workers also often turn to informal pharmacies and medical supply distribution channels online, which might offer unregulated, ineffective, and unsafe for them. Medical supplies distribution has been existing for more than 50 years in the Philippines, and yet up to date, there's no efficient, trusted way to find and transact online to registered medical suppliers in the country. Our solution is to provide a real-time access for hospitals and clinics to inventory and pricing of registered medical suppliers in the country, reducing the long transaction time spent between suppliers and purchasing officers. Introducing Interleukin, a cloud-based web platform that creates a seamless medical supply transaction deals, contributing efficiency to supply chains of hospitals and clinics. Our buyers will be confident to search, compare, negotiate, and process orders in just minutes, providing confidence, convenience, and contribution to quality of the healthcare system. Foreign medical device manufacturers get a local partner distributor to sell their brands, and almost 90% of these local distributors have no online presence to be readily available to attend the needs of the hospitals. And 80% of purchasing officers complain about the response time and disorganize of the suppliers to process their orders and delivery of items, causing delays in treatment to their patients. Having said that, Interleukin will cater levels two and three private hospitals and clinics as buyers, whereas we target medium to large scale local medical suppliers in the country, getting an estimate of 20% of the market for both clientels. Our go-to-market approach will have two teams who will, ha who will actively promote Interleukin to both sea levels of medical suppliers and hospitals so that nothing will be left behind and the suppliers will be able to adapt better technology on reaching out their existing customers and expand their reach as well. The traction started when we built the business name OT Health Traders, exploring B2B2C solely for medical supplies only. In our four months of operation for this business model, we were able to generate half a million pesos worth of sales and engage 60 buyers and 12 suppliers to participate. By gradually getting SMEs to transact with us via online, while some private hospitals have started to adapt transacting online to their suppliers, we committed to have a gradual growth in network in which we are projecting 20% growth by end of 2020. The revenue model is simple. We will get 2% of the total amount of purchase order placed by each buyer to every supplier they have selected in interlocking fulfill their medical supply needs. In order for us to achieve a $2.4 million revenue in 12 months, we will need 1,000 buyers with at least $10,000 in sales transaction on a monthly basis. And our competitive advantage, we are a focused B2B e-commerce platform, gathering only registered medical suppliers and hospital buyers in the country. We screen all the documents based on local and international regulation compliance. Interleukin will also seamlessly link to inventory data of suppliers, have the visibility on the arrival and expiry of stocks, having the benefit of fair pricing for same brands, and a 24-7 customer sales representative to support and provide product knowledge and marketing tools for the buyers. And lastly, my dedicated team, who has accumulated 20 plus years of experience in medical device sales, both local and international market, and expertise in hospital supply chain and my tech team who are extremely passionate to put in their time to combine their expertise in development, design, and data analytics for the benefit of the country's public health. Building Interleukin became a new hope that will give convenience to healthcare industry. In today's technology, we cannot become what we want by remaining what we are. So let's start to act, adapt, and thrive for a healthier place to live. Once again, I'm Lila Marquez, Interleukin, linking seamless medical supply needs.
Hi, I'm Amy, our founder and CEO of MedCheck. The problem that we're solving is the lack of real-world evidence in medicine, especially in the Philippines and emerging markets. The majority of patient treatment data cannot be aggregated and used for informational and research purposes because it's largely still on pen and paper. And so doctors have to rely on what they call medical intuition, and the information can only be gotten through surveys and focus groups. This problem is exacerbated even more because we now know that in medicine, treatments are not one size fits all. They're highly targeted and you hear a lot about precision medicine. This is data from the UK, for example, where you can see that diabetic patients only res respond well in 60% in of, of treatments. And with oncology, even less so, only one out of four patients respond as intended to their treatments. What we are is a clinical data and full suite e-consult platform for specialists in emerging markets. We provide telemed, EMR, and data analytics services to doctors uh, and, and hospital institutions and clinics. And we also work with partner groups in medical societies, research organizations, government, and pharma and biotech on real world data for research. We focus on specific diseases such as cancer and diabetes, cardiovascular and autoimmune, and we're growing. Our platform empowers doctors to consult virtually end to end, but we really focus on the cloud EMR and the data analytics. But our features allow patients to book online, doctors to consult virtually through telemed with them, for e-prescriptions to be prescribed virtually and sent through email, for doctors to be able to receive payments virtually as well through our paywall of our partners. We'll now show you a short video demo of our platform. Welcome to MedCheck. Upon login, we have great features like group sharing and patient status reminders to help doctors manage the practice seamlessly. The calendar and appointments page helps doctors keep track of schedules and flag patients for critical care. Our video telemed allows doctors to conduct group or one-on-one -on -one calls while referencing the patient's medical records on the same screen. Doctors can even share screen to show diagnostic charts and diagrams to patients during the call. We structure much of the data capture, such as diagnoses, and compliance in response to treatments. We make prescribing easy with shortcut features such as saved previous selections and custom favorites. When done, prescriptions can be sent directly to patient. Our analytics section provides real world clinical data for specific diseases and treatments. MedCheck, telehealth and clinical informatics for modern medicine. Well, on our way to winning the Philippines, we have over 1,300 specialists across 25 different specialties on our platform, and we're approaching half a million consultations. As mentioned, we've targeted specific areas, and we really focus on research in cancer, diabetes, and these other areas where we're able to get a critical mass of the specialists on our platform. We've secured major partnerships in our focus areas, which will really help us sustain our growth uh, in the long term. Uh, some of them including Philippine Cancer Society, uh, Institution for Study of Diabetes Foundation. We've won over key thought leaders as advisors, first initially on the platform, but now especially on the, on the data with research. The value in our model really lies in the unique data we're able to capture and the unique digital network we are developing across ASEAN. This data can be used by everyone in the medical community, by practitioners for evidence-based decisions, by government to really form public health policies based on localized statistics, by HMO and insurance for their planning for the future, and of course for biotech and pharma for the product performance and new development. Thank you. Hi, I'm Gab co-founder of MedHive. So really one of our customers, Richard Lear from the Gupan Doctors Hospital has stated that even before the pandemic, their hospital has had a hard time purchasing medical supplies, but the pandemic has actually made it even harder for them to do so. And this is because of three key problems. The first being an issue of everything being manual and inefficient. So back then you'd have to call over a med rep, which are basically specialized sales reps that have to go directly to your hospital to give you proposals for medical supplies. But because of the entire pandemic, these medrops cannot visit these hospitals anymore, and really none of that is happening today. And it will not happen in the near future because of the pandemic. And because of this, um, a second problem comes up, where the lack of medrops 
has made it so that organizations now don't know the going price for medical supplies. This urgent need for medical supplies and lack of knowledge means they often end up overpaying. But what's worse is that these two problems actually merge together to create an even bigger problem, which is an issue of fraud. The increased demand has added more fraudulent supplies and scammers into the market, and they're taking away from the time and resources that hospitals need to be treating their patients. But actually, these problems have been here even before the pandemic, especially for small regional hospitals. The pandemic has just put these problems in the limelight and in center stage. That's really why we created MedHive. MedHive is the smarter way to buy medical supplies. With MedHive, we make it easy for you to search for products, ensure the safety and security of your orders, and make receiving and payments much easier. And we do this by curating and verifying every supplier in our market space to ensure that you're dealing with trusted and reliable sellers. We also give transparency to the whole market by allowing them to see and canvas from different suppliers to make it easy to find the cheapest price from the most reliable suppliers. And of course, we digitize the entire order experience from canvassing, quotations, payment, and even issuing POs. It's all digital. It's all on MedHive. So far, current MedHive is being used by 209 hospitals and clinics in the Philippines with an average monthly backhead size of 4,000 USD, all ordering from our pool of 2,700 products on our platform. And we're happy to say that we've been able to help distribute thousands of pieces of medical supplies during the pandemic. And we couldn't do this without some of our distributors and brands on MedHype Day, such as 3M, Johnson & Johnson, and many more. And of course, we've been able to help to gain and transact the trust of these medical institutions and organizations that add up to around 1,000 hospitals and clinics that we can onboard onto the platform. And they really love us because what we're doing is returning a manual and efficient process into one that's simple, safe, and easy to understand. And so our business model is we take an average of a 7.5% commission from our suppliers. And we're disrupting the MedRep status quo by offering onsite advertising and giving them tools to assist with their content and affiliate marketing in order to improve their marketing in a post-pandemic world. So our market is 22,000 medical institutions nationwide, which is a $1.5 billion total addressable market. And of course, we couldn't have done this without our team. So we have Nigel, our CEO. Nigel owns two hospitals and has over 50 years of experience with dealing with their inefficiencies. I'm Gad, ex-Microsoft, and I handle and oversee all tech and product development. We also have Elle, who's a Singaporean business enabler and healthcare events manager, who's helped lead marketing teams for large events and companies in Singapore. In our investors, we have Eduardo Aban, Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. He helps us ensure all of our operations and processes have a certain military rigor. We also have Carla Union, president of one of the biggest pharmaceutical distributors in the Philippines, One Pharma. Carice Rodriguez is a COO of a large medical equipment distributor, Philippine Medical Depot. And we have Melissa Juaragui, a sales and procurement officer in Novartis and Philip Morris, to help us make effective and procurement tools and dashboards. So we're actually raising a 400,000 seed round for 12 months of runway to help us approach and onboard our lists of thousands of different medical suppliers and thousands of different hospitals and clinics that we can onboard on the platform, as well as to help us develop data-powered tools and dashboards to make procurement even smarter. So in a post-pandemic world, it is now more important than ever for businesses to work together and to work smarter. MedHive will help your hospital get there. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Noel Del Castillo, founder and CEO of CUDoc, an integrated healthcare platform and a marketplace for healthcare services. The problem we have now is that many clinics are closed due to COVID-19. Patients are unable to get a checkup with their doctors, hindering them to buy prescription medicines. Doctors are unable to provide telemedicine without access to the medical history of their patients and ability to accept payments. And then both patients and doctors still don't trust telemedicine due to privacy and security. We believe the solution lies in an integrated healthcare platform that is secure and has the capability to provide telemedicine so that patient can easily select, book, and pay for an online consultation via video call with their doctor using their computer or mobile phone, a prescription so that patients can buy medicines near their area, medical notes so that patients can upload their medical records, online payments so that patients can pay using their credit cards, GCash, or GrabPay, security and privacy so that patients' data can be protected using HIPAA standards. 
Let me introduce our product, CEDOC, an integrated healthcare platform that provides a digital healthcare system for patients, doctors, clinics, hospitals, and medical societies. We are a telemedicine partner of the Department of Health that provides free online consultation with our partner doctors. We are HIPAA accredited in ensuring data privacy, and we are guarded by our friends from Sikuna for any cybersecurity threats. We are the founders of CEDOC. I am the CEO and CTO with an MTM degree. Shasha is our CFO with an MBA and CPA credentials. Ryan is our COO and data privacy officer with an MIT credentials. Doc AJ is our chief medical and marketing officer with MD, MPH, and CCS credentials. All of us has more than 15 years of experience in our respective fields. And we are currently incubated at the AIM Dado Banato Incubator. Our business model is through transaction and subscription fees. We charge a percentage whenever we process the payment of the patient based on the subscription of the doctor and hospital. We have an auto disbursement system that automatically disperses payments between doctors, clinics, hospitals, and reseller partners. The market size of this in the Philippines is huge. Based on our projection, the TAM is around $1.3 billion. The SAM is $380 million. And our SOM for 2020 to 2025 is around $9.7 million. For us to capture the market, we are doing brand awareness, consideration, conversion, retention, and loyalty. The telemedicine industry is rapidly growing in the Philippines. We are currently positioned in a market that provides an affordable solution to our free and paid services, an integrated solution to our multiple product offering connected in a centralized platform. Our journey started 2018 which has an initial traction of 134 users, 20 doctors, and 44 facilities. Now, we have more than 12,000 users, 700 doctors, and 420 facilities on our platform. That's a growth of 9,000% between 2018 to 2020. We are happy to say that we are processing an average of 50 online consultations daily. With our recent partnership with PLDT and St. Luke's Medical Center College of Medicine, we are looking to grow 20 times more, more than next year. Let me demo on how our product works. Hello everyone, I'm Molly from CEDOC. Today we'll learn how to book an appointment using the CEDOC app. First, make sure that you have logged in your CEDOC patient account. First, click the search for doctors tab. We can search through a specialization or by typing the doctor's name. On the top right corner, Select the online clinic of the doctor and the online consultation service, then click Book Now. We can proceed to the book an appointment process, select date and time, then confirm appointment by selecting a profile. We can also write our chief complaint why we want to have an online consultation with the doctor. Next, we must select the payment option. Next, we must agree on the authorization and consent to participate in telemedicine consultation. Lastly, click the book appointment button. And there you go. We must wait for the doctor's approval and you can have your online consultation. Thank you and have a nice day. It's that simple. If you want to know more and interested to partner or invest in our company, you may reach me via email at noel.cudoc.com. Have a nice day and thank you for listening. Hello, I am Sabrina Romulo representing Xenia Health, one of the fastest growing healthcare startups in the Philippines. Now the healthcare system is fragmented. There are too many different stakeholders, hospitals, pharmaceuticals, pharmacies, HMOs, and laboratories. We as patients more often than not feel overwhelmed, inundated with information, and really just confused. As patients, we are left to our own devices to navigate the maze-like process of figuring out where to go, what to do, who to reach out to, and what to coordinate. Bottom line, it's tough to figure out the healthcare system. It's hard to find a primary provider. Insurance choices are confusing. Hospitals are intimidating, and being sick can be really scary. But does it really need to be like this? We at Xenia argue that it doesn't. Xenia is an advanced digital mobile health platform that delivers end-to-end clinical-grade medical services to your home or office at the touch of a button.
We leverage mobile and AI-driven technology at each stage of the healthcare delivery process to ensure higher degrees of accuracy and better patient outcomes. We're in the business of virtualizing medicine to provide Filipinos quality access to high-level healthcare wherever they may be. In January 2016, Xenia launched primarily as a wellness and massage app with a goal to build up the technology base needed for high-touch and high-frequency home service. It was always our intention to go into the medical services space, and earlier this year, we did exactly that. At over 114,000 total Xenia accounts and more than 350,000 completed bookings under our belt, Xenia has developed one of the most advanced last-mile medical logistics and remote care technology in the Philippines. Xenia has transformed the face of healthcare delivery by providing better services at less cost with greater speed and efficiency. We do this by leveraging our tried and tested technology-driven logistics, by pri prioritizing the vetting and training of a high-quality nurse or provider pool, and by integrating directly with hospitals, laboratories, pharmas, and HMOs. Xenia has created an Uber-style medical logistics platform. At any given time, we can assign, manage, and track every single job, whether it's a drug delivery from a pharmacy to a patient, nurse and medical kit transport from our operation center to our patients' homes, or cold chain specimen transport to our partner labs. Our technology enables us to take advantage of our own fleet of drivers, nurses, and providers to deliver items and services to our customers and partners efficiently. All services are performed by highly trained and equipped registered nurses. Our nurses undergo rigorous theoretical and practical training, all developed internally by Xenia to ensure utmost quality and service in every job. We put the power back in the patient's hands by getting all of the healthcare players, doctors, pharmacies, HMOs, and laboratories to come together in one Xenia ecosystem and serve you. We provide direct access to a doctor anytime, the ability to get issued both medical and laboratory e-prescriptions, and the power to order the medicines or lab tests, including COVID-19 testing, all without leaving the app. Without having to go to a clinic or a hospital or a pharmacy, patients can order medical grade services and medicines in a straightforward and easy process. Plus, all medical records can be accessed and managed directly by patients on their own mobile apps. Xenia also has a corporate health arm that provides end-to-end -end health solutions to manage organization-wide health and safety. We want to support Filipino companies as they transition back to work in this COVID-19 environment. This digitized return to work solution covers every aspect of corporate health and safety, including smart daily symptoms checks, a QR pass for workplace entry that integrates daily symptom data and gate-based temperature checks, and automated quarantine rules. Bottom line, we aim to simplify and safeguard the return to work process for companies and employees by providing data and tech-driven solutions. Our marketing strategy centers around direct-to-consumer marketing, targeted corporate client selection, and, and strategic partnerships. Our customer base from our earlier days as a pure wellness company gave us a loyal following to upsell our medical services to. We have seen this strong customer, customer loyalty and the word of mouth phenomenon significantly contribute to our brand recognition. With regards to our corporate health offering, we utilize a high touch targeted approach through existing relationships to service return to work corporate needs. And finally, we are proud to be backed by the top hospitals, laboratories, pharmas, and HMOs in the Philippines. These strategic partnerships have been pivotal in our effort to scale our business and build our brand. We are proud to have a team of people with different perspectives, experiences, and abilities. Our strategic, finance, product, and medical teams are supported by our logistical and operational staff, our software developers, and of course, our nurses, therapists, and drivers. We all have one thing in common, the desire to make a frustrating healthcare system more human and more friendly. Thank you very much. Once again, we are Xenia Health. Always stuck in traffic, work, or just overall lacking time to do things? Or having to go drugstore to drugstore but still can't find the meds you're looking for? Are you or do you know a loved one who has diabetes, hypertension, or other chronic diseases that need daily medication and suddenly lose track when meds are running out? Are you a pharmacy owner struggling to find consistent customers? Now you don't need to worry about those. Fast meds bring healthcare to your home. 
Get your essential from anywhere, anytime. Place order on Fast Meds. Receive email notification confirming your order. And the next thing you see is your delivery at your doorstep. Now you check which drugstores have what you're looking for. Arrange scheduled deliveries ahead of time. Now pharmacies have loyal customers all around the city and better sales. Join Fast Meds and be part of an innovative way to serve our community. Filipinos deserve better. Fast Meds brings healthcare to your home. It links the public to quick, safe, and affordable healthcare services and products. Fast Meds is a medicinals and health products delivery platform. It complements private and public entities that offers health um, healthcare services in the Philippines through our online and logistics service. Here are the problems that Fast Meds is solving. Lack of time and comfort, generally because of busy schedule or the traffic within the metro, no reminder for chronic disease patients who take their medications daily, unavailability of medicines, and poor customer acquisition, especially for small and medium players. To solve these, Fast Meds lets customers order from the comfort of their homes, have a reminder and scheduled delivery for chronic disease patients, have all stars in one place, and add value to small and medium players through our online and logistic service and also to improve their customer acquisition. So this is Fast Meds business model canvas. The revenue streams are coming from commission, subscription, and delivery fees. Our partner drugstores are our co-promoters and Fast Meds can easily be reached um, through our website as well as our social media pages. Currently, our competitors are our fellow startups who offer online and logistic services from drugstores or in-house going to the public. Um, however, Fast Meds is looking into um, a bigger market by tapping into other fields as a logistic service in the future. FastMeds has been incorporated mid-year of 2020, um, and currently we are still growing our, our subscriber base. Um, currently, we have reached over a million in sales through our website and founders market testing. And our increase, uh, there is an increase in unique users every month through our website. The platform can be conveniently reached through um, a smartphone or a PC. So the orders just upload their information or prescription if needed, and FastMeds confirms the order and verifies the user info before bringing the order from the pharmacy to the customer's doorsteps. And the team is composed of yours truly, Rowan Dornagon. I have a background in pharmacy from the University of the Philippines, and Oliver Habimana, my co-founder, who is creator and co-founder of both Remote IT All and Haraka Meds Limited, which is operating in Rwanda, East Africa. Thank you. These are the faces of the many women in our country today who dream of a better life for themselves and for their families. However, lack of access to opportunities due to differences in age, educational attainment, and work experiences leaves them just that, dreaming. According to the Center for Women's Resources, millions of Pinais are, are either jobless or underemployed, and that the majority of women are still struggling with job security. This has even worsened by this pandemic. Wages remain low, with some provinces implementing an average of 300 pesos in minimum wage. Cleaning Lady helps to address this gap by providing more Filipino women with decent work, creating additional income opportunities to augment household income, and ultimately to contribute to the country's economic growth. Cleaning Lady is an impact-driven enterprise that provides Filipino quality cleaning service that is professional, caring, and warm to condominiums, residential houses, offices, and establishments. We now also offer additional services such as deep cleaning service, disinfection service, post-construction cleaning. So for every booking, we charge a tiered price based on the duration of service hours record. And in a month, a cleaning lady earns an average of 15,000 pesos, which is higher than a minimum wage worker by just working an average of four hours in a day. 
While we were among the pioneers in the industry since 2016, we now compete with many other service providers, especially in Metro Manila. But what sets Cleaning Lady apart are the distinct characteristics positively attributed to Cleaning Lady, high quality, premium branding, and the warm and homey feel of our service, which we call all together as Tatak Cleaning Lady. We officially launched the business in June of 2016 with just a Facebook page and with 61 bookings on our very first month. To date, we now have over 22,000 bookings of which 80% are repeat customers. And we now have a growing 12,000 following in, in all our social media accounts. Through the years, we have earned a total of 13 million in revenues and have kept an average of 94 over 100 high net promoter score from all our clients. We've had quite a number of mileage and our story has been featured in various social media channels. But we are most proud at how we are able to empower and enable our partners, allowing them to send their children to school, put food on the table, contribute more to their family income, boost their morale, and enjoy a more dignified life. This 2020, even in a time of a pandemic, we have managed to thrive and grow the business by introducing process innovations and creating new revenue streams for the company. First is the Cleaning Lady Service Expansion, an initiative that paved the way for us to adapt to the new normal through the introduction of new services like disinfection and forming new partnerships. Recently, we just signed up an exclusive partnership with Filigree, one of the country's top luxury real estate by Philinvest. Second, and launching soon, is the Cleaning Lady line of sanitation and disinfection products for retail, an initiative targeted to strengthen the Cleaning Lady brand and to make our products available to the market while creating an additional income stream for our partners. Third is the Cleaning Lady franchising an initiative to scale up Cleaning Lady effectively and multiply our impact by creating more jobs to give hope to those who have lost their work due to the pandemic. Just two weeks ago, we were able to set up our Cleaning Lady La Union franchise, and this month, we will be launching in another location. We are projecting a positive outlook for this business as the quantity of condominium units is forecasted to increase with more than 452,000 units by the end of 2021. We are also looking at hitting 19 million revenues in 2021, coming from our core services together with earnings from franchising and retail. In addition, we are now working on the Cleaning Lady mobile app, which is slated to be released next year as we expect to grow our client base and loyal customers across the country. Our well-balanced team is composed of us three who have diverse backgrounds but we share one vision for the company, and that is to make meaning before money, impact before income, and significance over success. Cleaning Lady PH seeks to create jobs and empower women from all walks of life to show anyone that they are just as capable of everyone else and that women in general are capable of anything and more. Help us scale our impact. Help us bring Cleaning Lady to the next level. Hi everyone, my name is Sunin and I'm from Light of Hope PH. Today I'm very excited to share with you what our team does. Our team brings energy and Wi-Fi access to families who are living off the grid in the Philippines today. It might come as a surprise for many, but 1 in 10 people around the world continue to live without electricity today. And if we look at the Philippines, there's 13 million people who live every single day of their night um, in the conditions that you see in this picture. When COVID hit, the country, um, these people do not have access to electricity, much less access to Wi-Fi connectivity, leaving them marginalized when schools were moving online, when work were moving online. Our team is here to solve the problem with them. Over the last six months, we have created a product called CloudGrid. CloudGrid uses solar energy powered by the solar panel that you see on the picture to bring energy and Wi-Fi access directly into homes. What this enables them to do is that through access to energy, families could save up to 18 USD in monthly savings through replacing their kerosene gas with LED lights and through charging their mobile phones at home. 
but it also allows any family to also have a Wi-Fi proposition that they can then take and resell the Wi-Fi to the communities in the region. So let me show you how this looks like in practice. We have launched about five units of cloud grid onto, uh, into a community that is quite close to Cebu. And how it looks like within the house is that the energy box is posted onto a wall and the roof um, and the solar panel is actually attached to the rooftop. The output uh, pockets here that you see would allow, it, uh, would allow the energy box to charge a light and also to charge any kind of simple mobile devices. And at full charge, each of these boxes would last for up to 12 hours. When we installed this into the, the home of, um, of this gentleman over here, he was super delighted and he realizes that that could actually be used to charge this karaoke system. And then he was actually um, giving us a great session of singing as, as we were deploying. The Wi-Fi proposition is super easy as well. Um, what you can do when you have the box in your vicinity is that there will be a router powered by a prepaid uh, Wi-Fi SIM card. So uh, the user of the box will be able to allow the buyer to choose the Wi-Fi rates that they want, acting like a small internet cafe. So you could use it for 10 minutes for one peso, um, one hour for five pesos, and etc. So the user would pay um, for the package that they want, and a Wi-Fi uh, voucher code will be generated. The seller would then give this voucher code to the buyer, and the buyer would input that code, and then they could directly connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot. The best part of this is that you could buy a three hour package and if you don't finish using it, you could pause it and come back and use it when you, when you actually need it. Our business model is very simple. For the energy um, subscription, we charge a monthly subscription fee of 12 USD. And this is equivalent to the same amount of money a household would be spending on a uh, kerosene gas every month. So we wanted to put ourselves on, on par with what they are already um, spending today for energy and light. As for the Wi-Fi proposition, we actually charge us a monthly revenue share of 50-50%. So it really depends on um, how much can a, whole, uh, can a household generate in monthly Wi-Fi resale. But our current projection stands at 60 USD per month, um, and we would take 30 per, uh, 50 percent, so that's 30 US dollars. All of that constitutes to a 70% increase in the monthly disposable income for these families. There are a number of competitors in the market, but none of them really addresses this last mile electrification plus Wi-Fi challenge. On the, in the very early stages, um, there are solar night lamps generally run by nonprofits, but these have very limited impact with only basic feature of light. Um, and then you've got the, the likes of um, great founders who are creating microgrids for communities, but these are really only good for cluster communities and the reach um, could not be, the, the same kind of benefit could not reach the rural communities and mountainous communities. And finally, you have solar home systems that provide power for home appliances, but that doesn't come with a Wi-Fi feature. So where we stand is that we, we see ourselves being the last mile electrification solution alongside with uh, Wi-Fi access. Our go-to-market has got three different channels. Um, the first one is to upsell to existing 1,400 households who are already using our solar night lamps today. We would love to also explore partnerships with households um, to tap into their Wi-Fi packages and also the user base that they have. But one of the most um, successful go-to-market for us in the last six months has been through NGOs and CRSR, who were the first to recognize that Wi-Fi challenge and energy challenge hit um, the, the, the marginalized community the hardest during COVID. So we've actually managed to launch a, a two fully funded pilot um, since the three months that we were live. Our team is united by a common passion to enable life. Our co-founder, Jovi, who is also the CEO, has spent five years as an energy advocate and is well recognized in the Philippines as a social impact leader. Um, I'm the CFO and my name is Sumin, as I mentioned, and I've spent seven plus years within strategy consulting and venture building. And my role here is to bring the strategic lens and business lens into building a scalable startup. Our CTO, Efren, has got four over years as a, uh, experience as a full stack developer, and he's well versed in both cloud and on-premise uh, services and development. And finally, not to forget our advisor, Ed. Ed has been immensely helpful for us with 15 years under his belt as a technical sales engineer. Um, giving us immense insight into 
the understandings of ICT and the technology advancements in that area. So once again, we are Light of Hope and we welcome you in joining us to build communities today. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Francis from Socialite and what we do is we connect the unconnected sustainably by putting up Wi-Fi in low-income communities and allowing them to exchange plastic waste into free Wi-Fi. So the bigger problem here is really about access to the internet. 50% uh, of the global population, particularly in developing countries, don't have access to the internet. That's 3 billion people with one or two smartphones each. And FMCGs are making 80% of their sales from these groups. So what we've done is we've created ViaFi. It's a community Wi-Fi that enables us to create digital communities where we're able to solve three key problems, connectivity, poverty, and the environment. So how ViaFi works is that we partner with telcos, ISPs, and cable companies. These guys provide the infrastructure, the bandwidth, and we provide the platform that allows them to monetize in low-income communities. This enables them to incentivize uh, themselves to go into these communities and to put up services that they normally overlook just because these guys can pay the subscription fees that they're hoping for. Then we're able to deliver internet in these low-income communities in a cheaper, free, uh, if they exchange plastics for Wi-Fi. So how we do this is we have a platform that allows us to choose in two parts. In one way, we're able to lead in sites that we want to be in with partners that we want to be with and we can go and partner with them and go to those sites uh, to put up the Wi-Fi infrastructure. This way, we're able to put a revenue share or a licensing agreement in place, enabling us to monetize together with them. On the other hand, we also have partners such as ISPs and telcos who go in and, and want to go into their sites that they've already put up Wi-Fi. That's where we partner with them with just the platform, enabling them to monetize the Wi-Fi hotspots in those locations that they are in uh, and we're able to put up our platform just on the cloud for them to use. This is done through a licensing or revenue share basis. So far, we've, you know, we've gone really a long way. Uh, we have more than 500,000 plus users. Uh, we're across six cities in the Philippines uh, with four telecoms and ISP partners, six ad agencies, and of course, three international partners, particularly in Africa and South America, where they share the same issues and problems with the developing countries. Uh, now, what's very interesting is that this 500,000 unique users was gathered without any marketing or whatsoever. People simply searched for the Wi-Fi and started to connect to it uh, without any marketing whatsoever. For the free Wi-Fi, this is kind of how it works. Uh, you first log in, you put up your demographics, uh, age range and gender, and you accept terms and conditions and privacy policy, and you're in. After that, you see one to three targeted and relevant ads where we're charging some, somewhere around two cents and four cents per video view. Uh, and it's a cost per action where we're able to do lead and surveys. And then after that, you see a voucher page where you enter the vouchers, either you purchase from a Sari Sari store, or you can exchange plastics and get free Wi-Fi vouchers to access the Wi-Fi. And after that, you're online. So it's simple and straightforward. For the Sari Sari stores, we're able to sell at 10 US cents per two hours, that's five pesos for every two hours. And 20% of the earnings goes back to the Sire Sire store owners. That's 10 times better than what they get from a prepaid vouchers that they sell from telcos, enabling them to earn more and keep most of the margins for themselves. What's also better here is the partnership with brands. This is where we're able to create a free Wi-Fi exchange program uh, where they exchange plastic waste into free Wi-Fi. We collect sachets, labels, cigarette butts, pet bottles. Uh, this enables us to then exchange those plastic waste through the Sari Sari stores into free Wi-Fi. Uh, we're also able to incentivize the Sari Sari stores by giving them extra vouchers in exchange for those plastics, which is then upcycled or recycled by the brands. We charge somewhere around 10,000 US every month for every company and every community that they go into. What's great for the brands is that they're able to increase sales. So enabling them to market that whenever you buy their products, they give you free Wi-Fi in exchange. Uh, and of course, they're able to see consumption data in those communities, enabling them to gauge 
how well they're faring against their competitors and how well they're doing in those areas. And of course, competitor analysis, we're able to collect other plastics for uh, minimal minutes and then enabling us to then measure and gauge what's going on on the ground when there is no digital means of tracking so. And of course, the last two things is community empowerment, enabling people to get access to Wi-Fi, to give them access to opportunities, and of course, recycling, which is the most important thing for them to clean up their environment and of course, stay healthy because uh, plastic would block waste, uh, would block the sewages, enabling uh, flooding and, and of course, causing health concerns to the community people. We're going into Tondo, Manila. Uh, this is the next spot that we're going to be in. Uh, it's roughly about 259 barangays or blocks. Uh, it has 631,000 people cramped in such a small area. And it's a prime spot for C, D, and E markets, which is the low-income community market. This is the team, uh, the management and, and the founders. Uh, you know, we have a fair balance of business and as well as a tech. Uh, myself, I've been in tech for the last 15 years, and my wife, who came in with the FMCG perspective of Procter & Gamble, uh, enabling us to understand what the challenges are. And of course, our two co-founders, uh, Franz and Erwin, who came in from the technology side, having started various startups, having worked in good multinational companies, and having built systems uh, that, they're, that are now being used in social life. And of course, our advisors, uh, Roger and Rina, who are both advocates of education and esports, who are looking for ways to really give back and create an impact to the youth. Uh, and of course, Jojo Flores and Jay Fajardo, who are you know, excellent and, and experienced advisors who've been in the startup space themselves and are helping other startup members to really get on board. And of course, our investors, uh, JJ Atencio, who's given us really good insights towards the mass housing communities where internet is still a huge problem uh, that buyers are looking for ways to buy houses uh, that are well connected, but all of these areas are still unconnected at this point. Uh, Anderson Tan, who's given us really good insights on retail. Of course, Cerebro Labs, who's helped us a lot in different aspects from the public side of partnering with LGUs and as well as working together with uh, other private entities. And of course, Roger and Rina are both investors as well. So we're Socialite, so what we do is we really wanna help connect everyone else uh, who are not yet connected. There's 3 billion people who are still waiting to improve their lives through access, of, uh, access to opportunity. So if you could be here, help us out, uh, either as an investor, as a partner, or as our client, you know, we'd love to have you guys on board. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tony Tabares, um, People and Culture for FH Moms. And I'm here to talk about FH Moms. Anyway, three years ago, FH Moms started as a Facebook community. And right now, we have grown to more than 250 members worldwide. And the purpose of our organization is to equip, educate, and connect Filipino moms to online opportunities and collaborate with SMEs to help them grow their business through advertising and outsourcing. And our goal is to change lives one mother at a time. Now, because of the pandemic, 51% of Filipina women, well, Filipino women saw a decrease in working hours leading to decline in income and 33% lost their jobs. So our solution, a one-stop shop platform tailored for Pinay moms with the following products and services. E-commerce with cash and installment option for equipment. E-learning with curated freelancing and entrepreneurship courses and assessments. Job matching with one week internship. And we also offer market research and advertising for brands and mompreneurs. Because of our initiatives to battle COVID-19, many moms and FH moms, just like Mommy Jen here, who is a former OFW, a PWD, and a single mother, is now earning between $1,000 to $2,000 monthly. This year, we're still developing the features in our platform and now implementing our COVID-19 initiatives. Aside from 3,000 paid students this year, 
We deployed 30 desktops in our computer rent to own program. We recruited 270 new hires for our BPO clients. And we also closed 11 paid brand clients. In 2024, aside from completing all the features of our platform, we wanted to add courses for OFWs and entrepreneurs. For our COVID-19 initiatives, uh, we are looking for donors and partners that will provide scholarships and jobs. So we bootstrapped our startup and was able to grow our numbers and revenue exponentially. Since we started, we already earned a total of 16.9 million pesos and accepted more than 9,000 students with a growth rate of 15%. Here is our five-year revenue projection and our expenses. Um, all of us um, in the team started as freelancers. We are the best team to solve the struggles that our members are facing because we know our problem and market very well. And we are driven to work on the solutions. Our all-female team is expert in community building product and business development, administration, multimedia, recruitment, and communications. Below are our trainers right here um, and their courses together with our strategic partners. We plan to partner with TICT and DTI. Now for your questions, please uh, feel free to get in touch with us through our Facebook page. Thank you. Good day. My name is Rafa and I'm one of the founder of Cocotel. We are currently seeking 3 million pesos in exchange of 10% equity of our firm. Cocotel is the fastest growing tech hotel brand and aggregator focusing on the top getaway destinations in the Philippines and soon Southeast Asia. We do solve common small hotel owners problem. Well, most of them, they are very traditional. They do not have access for the online world of booking. And at the same time, they lack of technology to properly monitor their guests, which resulted in a low occupancy rate compared to the big hotel chain. And as for the travelers here in the Philippines, they do experience expensive yet substandard accommodation. And it is really hard for them to do booking. And if they have any questions for their bookings, it's uh, most of the hotel owners or staff cannot answer them, which, resu which resulted in an overpaying for their guests. And this is how Cocotel comes in. We do provide our small hotel owners with technology, such as yield inventory and revenue management system, a hotel management system, and an access for the online travel agency which we will give this system or features for free for our hotel owners. And this will help them increase their occupancy rate. And how? For the travelers, uh, we do provide them or promise them with a standardized clean and comfy rooms and also a seamless and easier experience for the, book, for the guests starting from bookings up until they're checking out from our resort. This is how Cocotel makes money. Uh, we do have three uh, different revenue. The first one will be the Cocotel culture, in which we only do digital marketing for the resort in exchange of 15% commission from bookings coming from us. The second one will be the Cocotel signature. This is where we manage the whole resort using the Cocotel way in exchange of 8% sales of the total sales of the resort. And lastly, the Cocotel Vibe. This is where we transform the substandard accommodation and we change it into a Cocotel IG worthy rooms. And for this, we do charge the guest or the partner 15% refurbishment cost and another 15% for the digital marketing sales. In terms of the competition, we are actually the fourth player in the country. Uh, what makes us different compared to the big hotel chain 
or is we are the only Filipino company who caters for the Filipino guests. And while they are focusing on the cities, we, we as Coco Hotel, we focus on the getaway hotel destination. It is uh, proven by our track record. For the last one and a half years, uh, we already been expanding and we are currently present in 18 locations all across the Philippines. That makes us the largest getaway hotel chain in the country. But it doesn't mean that we're slowing down. Once the corona pandemic ends, we will expand again soon. In terms of the social media, we do have more than 23,000 followers from both platforms. We do have a highest uh, reviews from our guests compared to our competitor. We have 98% response rate and we reach 600,000 post reach every single month. As per financials, we started to make money last year. And for the last nine months, we, all, we reached almost 15 million pesos worth of bookings. And for the first three months this year, we reached almost 9 million pesos worth of bookings. However, unfortunately, we need to close down for the last eight months due to Corona pandemic. But as we believe for the domestic recovery uh, by next year, we are starting to open our resorts little by little. These are the founding teams of Cocotel with an extensive experience in operations, finance, and of course, hospitality. These are all the awards that we get for the last two years. And we are also featured on the following channels. Again, we are raising 3 million pesos in exchange of 10% equity. The money that will be raised will be used for our operations, marketing, and in order for us to prepare for the next year domestic tourism booming. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me through the following numbers and email address. With this, thank you very much for listening to our presentation and let's escape the ordinary together with Cocotel. Hi. Great to be here. My name is Andrew Kua from MedMart Philippines, and we are humbled to share to everyone about our platform for medical supplies um, in the Philippines. Over the past six months alone, together with the team and everyone else, we were able to provide access um, to over half a million PPEs um, around the Philippines, predominantly to hospitals, medical workers, and donations. We know we can't do this alone, so we want to share what we do, and maybe we can work well together. Our mission is simple. We want to protect a million vulnerable Filipinos, you know, by providing sustainable access to different PPE equipments um, around the Philippines. Our core or our basic mission is to be able to provide a million PPEs. Our vision in the long run is to make it easy for a billion people to access affordable medical products. What's the problem um, when the pandemic started? So when the pandemic started, PPE prices were too expensive. Major retailers would be selling a box of mask, uh, 50 pieces of mask at the price of 1,400 pesos. That's around 28 pesos per piece per day for everyone who needs to go out. And that is quite expensive. There are not so much alternative um, options for people. So many people had to buy from them, those who can afford it. Those who can't are not protected um, during the pandemic season. On the other hand, there are a lot of med medical manufacturers out there um, what they're looking for is actually a sustainable distribution channel. Their core problem is that they manufacture a lot of these PPEs at a really low price. They ma manufacture it at 90% below the retail price of how these PPEs are being sold in the Philippines. There's a lack of access to the Filipino consumer directly. So what we did is we created a bridge. We became positioned towards becoming a sustainable leader in medical products by working closely with different manufacturers, bringing quality PPE to the market, facilitating access directly to end consumer. And because of that, a consumer who used to buy you know, a box of masks at 1,500 pesos during that time would be able to access it at half the price. Doctors, medical suppliers, on the other hand, get it at a subsidized rate. And in some cases where healthcare workers or community workers can't afford it, we also provide you know, donations um, as a way to reinvest our profit in the form of sustainable donation. 
So that's the solution that we created. And people could just pick the right PPE for them in three simple steps. First, they select the products um, that they need. They choose a payment option. So basically, we have a customer service team um, through our chat-based commerce that facilitates it. Um, on some occasions, people also book it through our e-commerce platform. And finally, we fulfill and ship the product to end consumers. Medical supplies um, in the Philippines are expected to grow conservatively um, at 6.6% um, compounded growth in the next three years. Um, right now, it's, it's valued at um, $820 million um, annually. And this is just the beginning of the growth of medical supply needs. And we're hoping that no pandemic ever comes again. But if ever it does, we will be much more prepared. So our business model is simple. We work with manufacturers and brands that are credible, that offer quality PPE. They are able to scale up production as long as they are informed ahead of time and as long as we work closely with them. Then we set the platform markup. Platform markup we set is something that is very sustainable. It's ranging between 30 to 50%. This is significantly lower than most other options that mark up 200 to 500%. Hence, the result is the MedMart publish rate. Every one peso that we make generate an average return of two pesos. That allows us to become sustainable and to redistribute profit properly. A quick look into our traction is that we broke even on day 13. We run a small, humble team of eight, um, and we've served at least 2,000 unique customer and healthcare worker, providing 500,000 um, PPEs to the market, yielding you know, at least 7 million pesos of savings uh, for consumers, healthcare worker, hospitals, nonprofits and LGUs, and we have over 100 plus, you know, five-star review recommendation um, in our social media channel. And we are very happy because all of these are possible through the team. Uh, just a quick look in the long haul. Um, we're looking um, to potentially work on the pharmaceutical vertical, um, given the right opportunity and partnership. And we are looking to growing at a rate of 250% year on year. But ultimately, this depends on what happens throughout this pandemic. And we're hoping for this pandemic to actually end early. So once again, we want to say thank you uh, for staying tuned with us, for listening to us. Uh, we can't do this alone, so we want to work together with you guys. We have provided half a million PPEs um, to date, and, and we're looking to providing another half a million PPEs uh, until the end of this pandemic. Um, thank you so much. We're open for partnership. Um, thank you. Hi, I'm Ray Minoza from Mindanao, CEO and founder of Streetbike, the first super app in the Philippines. In today's difficult times, because of COVID and recession, a lot of businesses are closing, a lot of businesses are failing, and it's high time to embrace technology and adopt digital platform to answer the demand of the increasing online consumer. Streetbike's mission is to provide an affordable and innovative technology for businesses. Streetbike is an online logistics platform where both consumer and businesses can can able to transact online and even have their products delivered. We cater food delivery, grocery delivery, parcel, shopping, and many more services at Streetbike. As of today, Street Buy has probably delivered around 200,000 transactions already and operating in different cities in Mindanao. Competitors has invested our country with foreign companies. To all Filipinos out there, let Competitors has invested our country with foreign companies. To all Filipinos out there, don't let this happen. Support local companies like us and don't let our country be conquered. Sit by with the coming future. We created a very competitive super app that is, that is equally faster and better user experience with real-time monitoring and offering a lot of discounts 
and with our writers that are very dedicated in serving Filipinos even better. We even have better value proposition for our partner business, where we offer lesser commission. Today, I'm asking all of the investors out there to support us, invest with us, not because we are entitled so, not just because we are Filipinos, but because we have the product that is globally competitive enough and a Filipino product that can serve the customer well and better. Be part of this biggest opportunity today as online consumer growing exponentially. And thank you.